Another driving vlog. I decided to change the setup just a little bit, so um, I'm trying to find a way to, uh, to get rid of all this uh, background noise. So I figure if I have uh, consistent noise with the fans and stuff, um, maybe I can eliminate that a little bit easier than I can with background with, uh, with the windows down because the background noise is uh, it varies from you know passing cars and stereos and whatever and, and them and stuff like that but I figured if I had the windows up and the fans on the fan is a constant noise it's easier for uh, my editing software to pick up so hopefully at least this is the idea here hopefully um, the sound will be a lot quieter once I get down to editing this thing uh, but <laughs> that's the idea anyway if it doesn't then I apologize and this experiment's a failure anyway the reason I'm doing this vlog is to uh, kind of talk about uh, some of the difficulties I had in uh, transferring uh, from Japan back to America. And this is kind of a uh, video response to my friend Zach, also known as Phoenix787. He's kind of going through a bit of hard times lately and uh, you know, he's considering some of his options about either staying in Japan, come back to America, stuff like that. So I figured I'd at least share my story, you know, for better or worse, and maybe it'll kind of help him out. So, um, I know that there was a lot of uh, different emotions and stuff in me when, uh, a little before I left Japan. And I know for the last month or two, um, I was very reclusive. Um, I didn't want to go out and do much of anything just because I felt, in a lot of ways, you know, in some ways because, you know, the Navy was a very stressful job. It was a job that I wanted to leave so I could move on and do better things. You know, I didn't want to leave Japan because, you know, that's that was pretty much the only thing that I liked about, you know, being in the Navy was being stationed out in Yokosuka and uh, meeting all the people out there and getting to see the different sites and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to lose that, but at the same time, the Navy was really stressing me out and I felt like I, you know, didn't want to be, didn't want to continue down that career path anymore. I wanted to do something else. So I was really torn between something I really liked, but having to do something I really didn't like in order to keep doing the things that I liked. And, you know, I just had to weigh my options and decided to, uh, decided to uh, not re-enlist and you know, um, <laughs> I guess through uh, you know physical fitness failure and uh, that's attributed to you know just me being stressed out and I never really worked out all that much anyway and you know, just being very stressed out and just feeling like I didn't have a lot of time to work with things so, I'm definitely a stress eater, so when I'm stressed out, I eat, and I recognize that now. And I also drank a lot while I was over in Japan, just because it was easy, it was a lot cheaper over there, it felt like, to get alcohol, at least enough to give you a buzz, something like that. And regular beer just doesn't really do it for me. Um, so I went with like the strong chew highs and stuff like that, which are like 9%. Versus, you know, a typical American beer, like maybe 5.5 to 6 percent on average, maybe less. But uh, in any event, went through all the stress, gained a bunch of weight, came back to America, and gained more weight. But that's what it is. But in any event, failed the uh, PRT because of my weight, and um, at that time they had. This, uh, this revised instruction for the PRT to where um, they could scrub one of your past failures in order to uh, let you to continue to serve. So if you got one more failure, then you'd be out. And uh, so I was given the option to you know, continue on, provided you know I worked out, lost the weight, lost the weight, and didn't get another failure. But I 
decided not to go through with that because, you know, I just felt that for me, and this is just for me, you know, I'm not saying the Navy's a bad place to work or you can't get a good career out of it or whatever. You know, the Navy's great, it can be great for, for some people, but for me it just wasn't it, you know. And I recognized that and I decided to just move on with the out processing, get out. Um, I wouldn't have, I didn't lose any of my benefits, so I got out on an honorable discharge. No benefits lost. I think the only, the only benefit, I guess, that I did lose, so the only difference between me getting out at my EAOS versus getting out through this PRT failure was that um, I wasn't able to take terminal So I had to buy back all of my uh, leave time which actually in the long run helped me out because it gave me a little bit of extra extra money to help with uh, moving expenses and other stuff while I was coming out here to Kalamazoo, you know, to get an apartment and all that kind of stuff. So in the end, it actually helped me out. So uh, it all worked out in the end. But uh, <clears throat> I'm not getting into Zach's situation because, you know, that's, that's his own personal thing. But uh, for me, uh, when I first came back to America, I was very, very uh, just jaded and very hurt by the whole thing. Like, yeah, I was glad to, you know, be back with my folks and stuff, but, you know, it wasn't the same as coming home on leave where you just feel like you're visiting, but you're eventually gonna, you know, get back to real life and get back to the Navy and do your thing out there. You know, it was... This, this was life now, <laughs> and it was really hard for me to, to grasp that fact, um, so I fell into a bit, of a, a bit of a depression when I first came back, and I think this is normal for, for most returning expats and most um, newly, uh, you know, newly discharged veterans as well, so they go through the, this period of and not knowing who they are, not knowing what their goals and stuff like that are anymore, and losing focus and stuff. And that that three-month period in between me getting out and going to school was really rough for me because, you know, I was so used to always being on all the time and just having something to do. And going from that very hectic, very stressful uh, environment in Seventh Fleet, which is where I was stationed, uh, to going to doing nothing all day. Like I would, I would just sit at home in my room, be on the computer all day, just looking at YouTube videos of people out in Japan and a lot of my friends' videos and stuff like that. Just wishing, like, fuck, I wish you could be there with them, be there and experience those different things with them. You know, it didn't even have to be in Japan, but I just wanted to be there with them as well. And, uh, it was really rough. And plus, you know, my friends from back home, uh, most of them moved. And uh, the ones that did stay, you know, had a significant other and kids. And, you know, they were, they were busy with their 9-to-5 jobs because, hey, we grow up. Shit happens. So, it was hard for me to hang out with them because they were just busy all the time, either at home with their kid or kids or uh, with their 9-to-5 jobs, so it was very difficult for me to adjust to that, so it was pretty much just me, and like my folks were, I don't know, they didn't really push me to do anything because they knew that I was going to leave in a couple months, so, you know, they weren't really pushing, like, get an apartment, get out, <laughs> you know, they're very, they're very, uh, Pretty hands off, I guess. But at the same time, I kind of felt like such a fucking failure to be in that house. I don't know. Like, you know, even though they didn't say anything, I just I felt the weight of failure because, you know, living there, even temporarily, just I felt like I couldn't provide for myself. And it really, you know, really just hurt me, I guess. And then when I eventually came out to Kalamazoo, lived in my, and, you know, got my apartment and started living on my own again, that helped a lot, it helped alleviate a lot of that depression, but I was still kind of feeling it because, yeah, I was going to school and stuff, but 
like I didn't really know anybody. I didn't really connect with a whole lot of people. I think the only people I really connected with were uh, you know people in my Japanese class, which you know, that was cool. Hanging out with them, we get to share stories about Japan and all that kind of stuff. So that that really helps. I think you know, especially that first semester, the Japanese class was the only class that I consistently went to. You know, there were some classes besides that one where. I would just skip out because, you know, whatever reason, you know, I was sick or I just didn't want to go or I was really tired because I stayed up too late or whatever the case may be. And, you know, <laughs> kind of paid the price for it, low grades, with some of the classes. And uh, so I decided for uh, the next semester, which was summer one, because Western divides their summer semester into two parts. So in summer one, I decided to get, get a bit more serious about my grades and give it, you know, no pun intended, but the old college try. And I did well in my English class, passed, but uh, for uh, but for uh, my other class, which was towards my major, my then major, of computer, computer information systems, um, I ended up failing it. So overall, I... Uh, didn't win the war as far as that goes and so I had to you know make an appeal to come back to the university because after that semester I was academically dismissed and at that point I recognized that you know what this whole CIS major thing just isn't for me um, I'm going to do something that I enjoy something I'm passionate about and that's making YouTube videos even though I don't do it as much anymore just time reasons mostly. That's the reason why I do these driving vlogs because there's not a whole lot of editing involved. It's just very stream of consciousness. You know, I hardly edit these things at all except for maybe putting music in, you know, music titles whenever the song comes on. That's about it, really. You know, so it's very easy for me to edit these videos and put them out there. It's a series that I really want to continue to do so long as I have stuff to talk about. You know, whether, whether or not people find this interesting, I don't know. Maybe, even if they don't, it's kind of my own form of therapy. Because I at least get to, you know, barf out these different ideas online. But uh, in any event, kind of getting back to the, you know, the, the reason for the story, you know, for my friend Zach. Um, I went through all these different changes, but after I experienced failure... I decided to reassess myself and figure out, okay, what, what, what do I really want here? What do I really want to do? Not, I don't want to, you know, taking money and stuff out of the equation, not what's the most lucrative career choice for me or any other stuff. Like, what do I want to do? And the answer was to make videos, whether it's for YouTube or some other platform that may come up later on. I, I enjoy making videos. I enjoy connecting with people who also do the same thing. And I want to help them out in any way I can. So I decided to switch majors from computer information systems to film, video, and media production studies, whatever you want to call it. And uh, starting with this semester, the new major, new focus, um, doing pretty well. Um, still resuming my Japanese classes, so I think maybe I'll, you know, minor in Japanese at this point, because, you know, fuck it, why not, right? <laughs> and, you know, the major, film video media major, is very, um, you know, it's very set up very well to the point where I can do something like that, so I figured, why not? And, um, Continue on, do this major, graduate, get my bachelor's degree, and uh, with that, get a work, you know, get a job out in Japan, get my work visa, and you know, live my life out in Japan. And uh, yeah, that's just my goal because I loved living out there in Japan. I love the friendships that I made, and I just love, I just love the aesthetic of Japan. You know, there's a lot of. You know, just how they uh, put buildings together, just the, the 
aesthetic. I mean, <laughs> that's the only word I can come up with to describe, you know, Japan to me, I guess. And this isn't some little pie in the sky, you know, yellow fever kind of description because, you know, I lived in Japan for two years. So, like, I know, I mean, I don't know everything. I'm not claiming to be a know-it-all, but I at least know kind of how some things work. And at least I know enough to kind of dispel some of the, you know, pie-in-the-sky views of Japan and stuff like that. And I still want to go back. Because I love it. And, uh, you know, to my friend Zach, you know, 15 spot minutes into this video, uh, I just want to say, you know, maybe if you do decide to come back to, to America, you know, don't think of it as a negative. Just, you know use this experience to really help assess what you want in life and to assess what your real goals are, not goals to get a lot of money or whatever the case may be, just goals that you personally want, you know, and then work towards those goals. And however you get from point A to point B, you know, it's largely irrelevant so long as you're making progress towards point B. You know, don't don't be uh, don't be too proud to accept jobs that you may not like, or you know, be part of situations that make you uncomfortable, just because they make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel less than you are, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, just recognize that was a chick flake. I don't recognize that, but uh, just recognize that uh, you know these. You know, this is kind of a, uh, a real developmental stage in your life and that a lot of this badness will eventually pass and you just got to refocus and reassess what you, uh, what you want in life. And maybe it's in Japan, maybe it's not. I don't know. That's, that's up to you. But if you decide to, you know, come back to Japan... That's cool. I mean, I decided to come back to Japan and uh, making it my goal to get back there. So I just figured out how I wanted to get back to Japan, get a college degree. Okay, cool. Once I get the degree, find a job, get my work visa, come back. Easy day. So how I get from point A to point B doesn't really matter because, you know, it's, it's a very dynamic thing. It's a dynamic environment that we live in. So, it's whatever, so long as you're making progress towards what be. So, you know, I just, I wish you all the best, and I hope that uh, everything works out for you, and that you find out uh, what you really want in life, and uh, I hope you get it, man, because, you know, you're a real good guy, I don't wish anything ill I kind of would have any ill will towards you or anything like that, you know. One of my friends I made off of YouTube, and, you know, I want you to succeed. But it's all up to you, man. You know, nobody can hold your hand through the whole thing. So just take this time to assess yourself, assess your life, figure out what you really want to do, make it happen. So with that said, this is the Andy Son. Signing up for now, thinking you guys tuning in to this driving vlog and for watching my other stuff and uh, best, best wishes to my friend Zach also known as Phoenix787 on YouTube uh, if you haven't subscribed to him be sure to subscribe show him a little little uh, love there <laughs> and uh, tell him the Andy Son sent you and I want to thank you guys for, uh, for watching my other stuff also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always I'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.